every day he's like, I'm gonna change the world. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm just <laughs> trying to figure out what I wanna eat for lunch. Welcome. It is episode nine of Closet Talk. I'm done with season one where all I did was talk about myself. I'm so ready to talk about other people. And speaking of other people, I'm introing my lovely guest, Savannah. Hi. Is it is it Savannah Ray Demers. 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 You know people get that wrong. They say Demers all the time, but it's it is what it is. It's it is French, it actually. So like okay. Demir, if you want to get really fancy with oh. it. Demir. I, I, I think I'm good with Demers. just a, Demers. Great. And it's, just so, it's so fun to say. It's very like direct Demers. to the point yeah. Demers. Stop. we're on that um, level now this is a bit of a reunion i haven't seen you i know how have you been and literally so good really good that makes how you happy good good. good not running marathons no yeah i won't be running one of those for a long time <laughs> <laughs> yeah and she's here in case you didn't recognize her it's because she constantly likes to change her hair from long to short chop it off yesterday it was it was down here yesterday do you get like extensions yeah do they hurt no because I don't know what they are. <laughs> no, just... they're like, they, they put them all over your head and they're like little tiny individuals. They like melt into your hair. So it's like everywhere. And I, she can put them in even like this length of hair, which is why I'm always just like, let me cut it off. Because I know she can put it back in if I want long hair next week. But I just wanted some short hair. That's such a hack. I know. Wow. Hot girls get extensions. I'm going to go get extensions. <laughs> Do it. <laughs> no, <laughs> absolutely not. I worked hard for short That's hair. That's true. I love your hair. Thank you. And this week's Queer Moment in History, which if you don't know what that is, it is quite literally a queer moment in history where we pinpoint a very pivotal moment within queer culture. And this week is the first week where I don't know what it is. And Savannah's going to tell me. She has all the power. So so much power. Um, <laughs> I was just going to talk about like the moment I knew she was like a little bit fruity. She is in you? <laughs> me. <gasps> Just the gay awakening. The gay awakening. Mine was Jade from Victorious. That too. That, that too. too. How'd you know? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um, that, but also Grey's Anatomy. Right. Um, and it, it surprisingly wasn't Arizona and Cali. It was Arizona. And that cameo star, Eliza. And I just remember she was this girl who came on randomly. She had brown hair and blue eyes. And she was just so like subtly flirty, like the eye contact, you know, they were they just kept having moments. And I was like... I could feel the tension within myself. You're like, is she looking at me? And she, she's looking at me, 100%. 100%. 100%. I've, seen, I've watched the episode too many times. Really? But it came down to, like, I mean, she, she ended up leaving the show, but before she did, Eliza and Arizona were outside, and Arizona was, like, rambling, wouldn't stop talking, was just, like, explaining herself. Right. And Eliza was like, oh, Arizona. She was like, Arizona, like, trying to get her to be quiet. She was like, stop talking so I can kiss you. <gasps> Oh it's cute shit. It's cute shit. And it made me feel something. I was like, and then they kissed and I was like, I would have peed a little. I did. I, yeah. No, <laughs> so I can't do that. I would admit, like, I probably re I rewinded and watched it again. And I was like, oh, but like, That's this was know, like, you're like wait. I know. I was like, wait a minute. This was like before college, though. And I still like wasn't sure, but I should have okay. known. Yeah, I was going to ask how old. Yeah, I, it was probably right before college. I didn't know till like my sophomore year of college, like actually where I was like, oh, wait, let me like actually embrace this a little bit. OK. Um, Just like the bisexualness. The bisexualness. Me. I but, love that. Damn, Eliza. Really? from Grey's Anatomy. That did it for you? That did it for that me. That was like the nail in the coffin? Yep. Yeah. So, so you never had like an inkling before? Honestly, no. Sophomore it, it, in college is like 19. I know. It really hit me kind of late. Wow. Yeah. Like puberty. Just like, like a little puberty. later. puberty. Yeah. And that was it. And then you were like, okay, that's cool that you were just kind of like, word, I need to embrace this. And word. then you did. Yeah. Did you ever like struggle or were you just fine? A little bit. It was... I didn't know how to, how to think about it, how to feel about it. Mm -hmm. So I, I only told my close friends for a while. And then, of course, we can get into it later, like how social media came in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like I saw someone on TikTok saying, like, you just need to like look yourself in the mirror and like accept like who you are. And then, I mean, like it's a choice. You can either like shut that person down or like embrace it. So, yeah, now we're here. It's kind of also crazy that like TikTok helps in that way. It does. You find people yeah. that, you know, came out maybe in their like 30s and you're like, wait, if they can do this, like yeah. I can do this, like yeah, I'm fine. fine. And like looking back, I have these moments too. I figured it out like maybe like a lot younger than you. But like, did you ever look back and you're like, man, I was being so gay right now? Like when you were like teens? Honestly, no. Like I did not have any of those. So, well, maybe in like middle school, I thought girls were pretty. Like I just thought they were pretty and I wanted to like look like them and be like them. But okay. like, we all know what that really yeah. means. But I did not know that at the time at right. all so i mean like i just always wanted to be friends with pretty girls um that's how it starts out you're like man that's how it starts. i really want to be her friend yes <laughs> but i never thought about it at all until right. 
until college, honestly, I didn't like actually let myself like explore that thought mm-hmm. in my head. So right. yeah, the rest is history. So how long have you known? Let's see. So, um, well, yeah, I think I knew in like 2021. Let's say three years. Okay. Three years. Okay. And Two, then three years. are you still in college? No. Me neither. I left. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Let's go. <laughs> awesome. And I'm just not going to, like, ignore the elephant in the room. Your girlfriend's staring at me right now. Hi, girl. How did you two meet? Yeah. So <laughs> she she has W Riz, okay? Okay. She, I was in my single era. Mm-hmm. She got me out That's of it. That's how it starts. That's how it starts. Yeah. She slid in my DMs. And we, she slid in my DMs, like, end of 2021. Like, very end of 2021. We were friends until, like, july of the next year like just friends we would like facetime sometimes we would text a little bit so friendly we Mm -hmm. had other people like come and go friends all of a sudden she flirted with me and i posted a picture of me eating cotton candy and she slid up and was like want to make purple and i was like (gasps) oh okay you know i do want to make purple i don't think i've (laughs) ever slid into anyone's dms before that's terrifying i could like that i could never oh well on you for that because like not me yeah but, and then you were like yes i do yes i do well just from there i was like wait like let me flirt a little bit like see where it goes i i was the type of person i'm just i was a little bit scared of relationships mm-hmm. i just life is crazy and you right. never know where things are gonna go but then we met up for the first time because she lives in philly mm-hmm. and i live all the way across the world in right. california so i had no idea where it was gonna go then we hung out and it was good so we just like kept hanging out and i'm really glad she wanted to make purple because here we are a year later our one year is october 23rd so oh my gosh go yeah. gay people that's so <laughs> cute i'm so happy for you guys i love because i have no idea when i met you or how i knew you yeah i think was it at playlist that's the first Carter time we at, met. I okay. think he knew Carter, and I think we were mutual somehow. Uh-huh. But we had never spoken. Yeah, so when did and we meet? I didn't even know whether or not to say hi. I get oh. I get in my head so bad yeah, about too. those kinds of things. Because it's like, you can meet somebody, and you're mutuals, and then they don't talk to exactly. you. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, what do I even say to you? <laughs> I know. Like, you're not it's, even, it can be it, scary and yeah. intimidating. It was really I love scary. meeting people, though. Like, please say I hi to me. I could tell instantly that you oh. were, like, chill, and you would yeah. say hi to me. And so I was like, okay, what's up? Yeah. When When was that? When did When did you say hi? When did we? I can't remember. It was my birthday. Why did I forget about that? It was September 2nd last year. Uh huh. And that was it? I guess so. And then we kind of like started Snapchatting and being yeah. like, what's up, homie? Yeah. What's up? It was and great. Then, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Lost touch. Such a good like, pal. Pal, <laughs> I have questions for you. Hit me with them. Because like, I think you're kind of cool, like gay coming. You're bi. You're bi. Yeah. Coming out story on the internet. Yeah. I'm so curious to hear that from like, I walk into a room, people are like, gay gay <laughs> you walk in a room you're so femmy and like yeah. happy that i'm sure you people all the time are like you get guys probably being mm-hmm. like they're like what so <laughs> i don't oh, even know yeah but you probably get that a lot and mm-hmm. then your demographic i'm assuming men Very. how did that pan over for you yeah and then when did you si- decide to like say something yes to all of that right she is femme very yes. no one would see it coming so that mm-hmm. was my first mental block i was like but people are gonna be like what like no like what i don't look gay but then then i realized it doesn't you don't have doesn't to look matter gay. how you look isn't there a sound on tiktok it's like but 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 they don't look gay yeah or something like that i yeah. don't know yeah it doesn't is. matter but then yes i was especially worried about my demographic it was predominantly male i kind of um you know exploded on tiktok for like telling these dad jokes being all cutesy and ditzy and Mm -hmm. and i i deemed the term everybody's girlfriend so like i felt like i had a lot of things i forgot about that yeah look like thinking back at that you were like i'd like Mm -hmm. open your comment section it's just like there's my "My girlfriend girlfriend looks so pretty today yes i'd be like damn girl's got this whole internet wrapped around which i'm so grateful for like i that was so much fun to me and Mm -hmm. i i'm so grateful for like that community that i had but uh, i mean sharing a relationship on the internet and on your social media is a huge responsibility. And all uh, all my close friends knew, my parents knew until summer of 2021, I think, I just realized, like anytime I would think about like coming out and like putting out there, I would like get shaky and I would feel like so just anxious until one day I was like, I don't wanna feel like that anymore. I was like, also, I heard this quote that was like, the you a year from now is waiting for the you right now to do something. Uh-huh. The oh y- yeah, yeah. Hit Whoa. me like a truck. Whoa. I know. So I was like, 
just do it like yeah. what are you waiting for like you know what i mean like a year from now to be done like whatever right so on june 1st like the first of pride month i posted a video i was like hey i'm bye and i like threw my leg up that's all love you and i like i just left it you at that i just hard launched <laughs> have you had you guys met at this point yes we had met but it was not at all it that was not like it wasn't we yet. weren't we weren't at all like in relationship yet so then i was just out and i was prepared for i i just came to the the realization that like my community my followers the people who like really truly just care about me and right. love me and my mm -hmm. content will stay and those who want to go can go you know right. like i don't want to i didn't want to hide especially that part of myself right. anymore i wanted to be able to fully be myself on the internet it's a big part it's like a really, really big, it's a big part, part. Of But I also understand that struggle of like grappling with this like sort of like identity that you're not sure about yet. Yeah. And that's for the sure. thing for me, like just like gender wise. I've yeah. never been on the internet and been like, I am this because I don't exactly. know. Exactly. You don't want to label it. You like who says it. you have to like say I am this, you know? Right. So yeah, I mean then then after that it's it's been fine. Definitely lost some of the guys, which is fine, but but no. then but then you grow I know, right? <laughs> Don't let the door hit you. <laughs> um, but the real one stayed. And then also I I gained this new incredible amazing queer community yes, that I was is about like to ask. so so beautiful and amazing. And I was mm -hmm. like, "Wow, like I've been missing y'all. So yeah. glad you're here. Hugs and, and kisses." And I think <laughs> it's so cool too cuz my girlfriend's you're actually kind of similar. Like she's so like cutesy and happy and yeah. like feminine and like i mean i post on snapchat you get, have a whole snapchat career <laughs> i literally commend you so much for uh, that. like thanks i don't remember to post yeah. but you're over here like making my bed little makeup routine, <laughs> every day and i get pink drinks and i'm like <laughs> like that's literally what i do like yes. I, it's like that you i now know because of my girlfriend whether or not a pink drink is too pink or it's too white and I'm yes like, i know whether or not to thing. ask for extra coconut milk or extra no strawberries no strawberries why did I not know about that? Why did I not know? She's Isn't it so mind. yummy? It's delicious. Every day. Every and it's day. like, she's like the more mask one in the relationship. Yeah. And she's the one who wants to get a pinkity drinkity every day. Now it's me. Yeah. I'm like, can we go get a it's pink so drink? It's so cute. Can we go get like a pink drink today? And then like, They're we so have young. our little drinks and we're in Target and we're buying like little makeup. Isn't and it I'm like, so much fun? I love having like a girly little girlfriend. I know. Because I'm like, this is so pretty. I love but, like, it. Yeah. Stop. That's you cute. You two are like so similar. And I see like your Snapchat blowing up all the time you're always on my little like top of the di i think she's snapchat all the i time, know yeah but you're did. always up there and, I, and she doesn't post on snapchat too often but when she does her swipe ups are crazy uh -huh. like gross yeah like really vulgar stuff yeah do you get that uh -huh. okay oh later i'm gonna like read comments about what some people comment on my stuff <gasps> ah. well just like more in the sense of um like i posted a picture of us together and some of the men right. were just commenting like Ooh, gross things so we can get into I was, that like, curious about yeah do you let that affect you at all or are you just like not me but okay. it does affect some people so i was gonna like read them and be like yeah that's not cool that's not cool um but what were you just saying though about oh snapchat like, and the swipe ups and people can really say some gross things and, some gross things and i think it's just i don't know the audacity of men is just literally yeah. bewildering well, i guess that is a good time for me to like, yeah. read like what some people were saying on my favorite thing is when they'll comment who's the man in the relationship and it's so funny because like the point is there is no, there man, is no man you know so that that one really gets me but when people say like this is fake it's just for views it's like yeah oh really <laughs> you're oh. in the room with us every day yeah I can, I you wake up with us every morning yeah <laughs> like, there. um you know let me find some good ones go for it are you ready yeah just you have some i mean like people are just saying you with like a throwing up mm -hmm. emoji <laughs> um you know unfold immediately <gasps> wait they were followed for that long and then they I just now realize. i know right wow a little late to the not game a not a real one not a real one this is a shame you know you seem completely fine though you like, know, I went through a period of time where I would spiral on the internet about what people were saying about me and, like, literally let it eat me alive. That has taken a lot of, like, personal growth and a lot of, I mean, like, that quote I said earlier, I'm a big, like, words person mm -hmm. and a mindset person. So, yeah, these things suck. And, I mean, sometimes people will say some things where I'm, like, like, it, it will really get to me. But most of the time, like, stuff like that, I'm, like, they don't know me yeah you know but what's tricky is like that stuff does hurt some people like you said like it yeah. it ate you alive sometimes mm -hmm. like 
so it just makes me sad to see that people like say stuff like that yeah. to people like we're people like i just wish everyone could be kind so no yeah. it it really doesn't get to me that much because i do have i feel like i do have such a great community on my social media platforms of of people who love me like i have enough people who just like will love and support me right and i'm so thankful for them that like why would i let those keep me up at night right you know what i mean like yeah. if you there's a quote like if you have like a hundred million dollars and someone took 10 dollars like would you care no no so if i have like all these great comments but a couple ones that are just like you i'm unfollowing I knew that was like gonna you're gross you know yeah like yeah. i but that's me a mindset person that that isn't as easy for some people to realize so no, it makes like me really sad me. well i used to i think i went through something where it was like at the end of the day i just I got to a point where I was like, man, I can't let this thing get to me anymore. It's draining. Like, it's draining. It was so draining. Like I lost like the most amount of weight in like a week than yeah. I ever had. I saw like a physical yeah. toilet to look on my body. I looked horrible. I was like, okay. I literally escaped to the mountains. I went on a like three day nice. skiing trip and I put my phone away. Yeah. And I like just did like no phone. And then I realized how much happier I was when I just had no idea what they were saying. So I kind of stopped reading comments, but like, yeah. man, that like got to me for a while. And now my comment sections are just funny. Because yeah. I kind of like soft launched a girlfriend. Yeah. But she got upset with me earlier. She didn't know I had one of those. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's not like hard launching yet, which I want to yeah. talk about a little yeah. bit. But like I kind of soft launched because I was like, I'm keeping something from the people who really care about me. And I think it's important to like give them a nugget. And be like, <laughs> I have someone in my life who's very important to me. Mm -hmm. But y'all are crazy. So like you're you probably, don't get to know you who. don't get to know who it is. Yeah. All the comments are like, How much did you pay Carter to do this? So they don't even believe that I have a girlfriend. But I was so curious when you two decided to just throw it out there. Cause I was like so yeah. like, low key brave that you were just like, Yeah, where this is my per this is my person, yeah. like we're good. It was scary. I was scary because like I said, I mean, most of my followers were men and I, I I just was not sure how they would react to it. But again, it came down to like, do I want to hide this part of my life that is like so important to me and like like just the main focus of my life. So we did a bit of soft launching. You know, you got the videos where like I'm lip syncing and then she puts her hand and like turns my head. Oh, I saw that you one. You see hand. Everyone saw that one. But then you have the detectives well who are like, these are this person's bracelets and these are this person's bracelets. That's this is I'm who so it is. So you have to be careful. I, I, had Spencer, I, had, I, was, I talked about this with Spencer because mm -hmm. her hand was in one of my mm -hmm. recent videos. And like, I, I was you like, can't. There are detectives. There, you've seen those videos where like people sit down and it's like, oh, I can find who it is, and the chair turns around and it's all green. Yeah, it's green and like they're like they're they're researching it's everything not even and they a joke. no, it's not a joke. People will find them. So I mean, we did some soft launching. I knew ultimately like I eventually would. It just mm -hmm. came to a point where like whatever you know whatever. like life is short like the right. sun is gonna come out tomorrow no matter what i post you know what i mean yeah. so so i was just i was like let's do it i and i'm happy to I, I still get comments and i still get you know lose some followers here and there but again you, the community you gain and replace of that yeah. is yeah it, that's, that's what that's fills the one my heart. you want you're losing all the people you don't want in the first why would place. i want them to yeah no. exactly but, so, so that's you just right. full sent it there was no like yeah i don't even remember when i even like fully fully posted about it but i think i soft launched for like two months maybe okay one or two months don't hold me to that but yeah soft launching is fun yeah i was it's gonna like a say game. i'm having a great time it's like a game it is yeah. so i don't think like i'm thinking about when i would ever just like post her yeah but the thought of that is so scary because mm -hmm. like you don't do social media either you do social media? Mm -hmm. You do social media? Yeah. I've never stalked you. I'm about to after this. But like, <laughs> She's a big sports girl. Okay. Okay. I see the sports jerseys on you. So I'm assuming yeah. that's because of you. Yeah. <laughs> she got me hooked. This is so cute. Every time she looks at you, she gets all blushy. This is so adorable. <laughs> yeah. It's so cute. She's in love. There. Love it. I love love. Love but, love. Yeah. Like, I feel like I have this, like, responsibility yeah. to, like, take care of her and, like, mm -hmm. make sure nobody's mm -hmm. mean to her. Because... She's not a sensitive girl. Like she gets oh. all those gross Snapchat swipe ups, and I'm like, "Are you okay?" And she's like, "No." Nah. Yeah. Like she does. She's so chill. Yeah. And I feel like I don't know, but there's just something about me that I'm like, I don't want anyone I'm to be protect mean to her. her. Yeah. yeah. Valid, which is very valid. I that that comes with the concept of like, it is a responsibility. Like once you put it out there, because like, I mean, it's your job, and like social media is your job, and like your relationship is your personal life. So it's finding that just like healthy boundary of like not letting social media get in between you, but still being able to share it and and what will they think and blah, blah, blah. Like, but it comes to a point where, I mean, I don't know. I 
I'm trying to think if I felt the pressure to post. Like, I think as a person, I, I could have been like, no, I don't want to. And I wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. But like, I, I guess it's to each their own. Like, if if you want to go for it. But in, in the social media world, like, there can be a bit of like a pressure to, like, especially if you're going to soft launch, people are going to be like, okay, but who is yeah. it? And then like, I mean, someone will see you out in public. And then like, it's just going to get out one way yeah. or another. So like, it's just that that aspect of it where it's just mm -hmm. like. Yeah. We're inseparable. So like every time I'm out and like I like meet people and they know who I am, mm -hmm. they like know that that's her. And I'm like, oh, this is so weird. Like <laughs> this is so odd. Yeah. Cause my soft launch post got like three million views, mm -hmm. and I was like, I'm scared. Like I'm. Really it's scary. Scared. It can be scary. Yeah. But you just have to trust that they'll be there to love and support you on the oh, other side. And I don't think that's the problem. Yeah. It's just like I don't know how I feel about the whole soft and hard launching thing because that's not mm -hmm. like what it felt like to me i feel like because i sit down every day and i just talk about my day i talk about my life yeah. i talk about you're what accidentally the soft I, it's more just like she's like 50 percent of that mm -hmm. like she's who i spend my time with yeah. it's like her and her carter that's like what i'm doing every day mm -hmm. and like obviously i pose with him because like best friends we live together everything like that yeah. But I don't know, relationships are just so, like, special, and I just, like, yeah. like, I get so scared. I just... That's valid. Yeah. That's valid. It'd be like that. How do you feel about, like, this... Did you, like, enjoy the soft launching, and then once you hard launched, you were like, we're just running with it? Because, like, you just did it. Like, there's no... I think personally, now. I did. I think I was... I was just okay with it, and mm -hmm. I was... I like to take the seriousness out of things and realize right. just, like... It is what it is, you know, and like yeah. being being just like content with sharing that side of my life. So I was OK with it. I had fun with the whole soft launch thing where like whether it was a hand on a leg yeah. or like a mirror pick, but her back is to the mirror yeah. hand in the TikTok, whatever it right. was like, that's fun. And it keeps the people invested and keeps them winning. Be like, who is this? And then eventually I was just like, that's because think about it, like there's so many cute TikToks you can so make, many. too. So like so many. And like I, <laughs> I see them, too. And I'm like. Come here, girlfriend. Come like, here and put them so in the drafts. Cute. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I have so many drafts. I'll show you one after this. Please. Like, I was like, oh, I don't think you've ever seen her. Mm -mm. Well, this is her. This, <gasps> is, uh, this is like a little heart. This is a little soft launch yeah, photo. Soft That's a little soft launch photo. Speaking of the hard and soft launching, I think of it more like existentially sometimes. Do you think about like maybe 15 years ago when you just have a partner and there was no requirement to do any of that? Yeah. What is that? I know. I was I was talking to like my manager about this earlier about how like soft and hard launching has like low key always been a thing, but it just didn't have that title. Like right. I feel like in today's day and age, everything is like has a title. It's like this is what this is. So, but also I feel like a long time ago i don't remember a lot of soft launching happening like i feel like it's becoming like a trend almost yeah that's you know? what i'm saying it's becoming it's so trending. glorified like it's glorified. I, get, I get so many videos on my for you page of like soft launch ideas mm -hmm. and the videos will and it's like cute pictures with yeah. like their faces in it uh -huh. and it's like so many cute ideas yeah and i'm like come here girlfriend but like I'll be like, why does this video have like 2 million uh -huh. likes? It's become so glorified. Very glorified. Whereas like back in the day, I don't know, did people just like post their person? Like they wouldn't yeah. post a person and then they would post them. Yeah. There was there was none no of this, in between. Like, there was none of this build up. Mm -hmm. And I'm assuming you've seen Chris Olsen's like hard launch. Yeah. <laughs> that was so crazy Chris to Olsen me. is a genius I he's such him. a genius oh. he like he's probably one of the best content creators uh -huh. i've ever seen yeah ever oh full respect he's got to him. so many different niches uh -huh. and then the build up and then the hard launch and then you could tell it was calculated a little bit mm -hmm. because there was a tiktok a tiktok hard launch on both pages yeah a tiktok or a, an instagram hard launch on both pages and That's like crazy. a tag in there and then a tag <laughs> in the caption it was like uh -huh. we we're going so it's so crazy ahead. to me. It's almost like I feel like storytelling is a big becoming a big element in mm -hmm. like social media and just like society these days. It makes your audience feel really connected. Right. Like they get ready with me's. But mm -hmm. in the aspect of like soft and hard launching, like it just adds to the story and it adds like, you know, in a movie when you're like, what's going to happen? And then like just like all comes out and you're like, wow, like it just I don't know. Yeah. I think. I love it. I I love the concept of soft and hard launching. I love love. I think it is so beautiful. But of course, like to each their own, I think it is. It's just beautiful when someone feels like safe enough to put their person out there. Right. right. I know. think that's so cool because it terrifies me. 
because I think it's more like <laughs> you're so scared. I, Valid. I do get Valid. scared because I think I heard a podcast from somebody who is in like a social media relationship kind of talk about how it became a job. Mm -hmm. And then it was like when you're having a bad day, but you still need to get the job done, you have to act like you're okay when you're not yeah. okay. And that was yeah. probably my biggest fear. That's something I we really try to talk about a lot is making sure there is like you can put work aside or you can, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. not letting work come in between you or yeah. whatever. And then like obviously, like you said, if you, if you have to film a video together and then just like act like everything's okay, like that's something I think about a lot is how many of the relationships that I see online are like true how how many of them are they truly like so in love and so happy and everything's okay because where I they're like, already like where they're not married yeah you know? yeah just where they look all happy and great and fine but like you said there's probably some days where they're they're not okay mm -hmm. and they're just like posting videos so like you you really got to find the balance with with relationships and social yeah. media and then the the side taking when the relationship ends is so you crazy. know about that a i little. know about that a little <laughs> i feel like it was like honestly like a pretty even split like yeah which was not the case in a lot of relationships mm -hmm. like i don't know i'd go through my comment section like half the days and they'd be like you. <laughs> and then i'd go through my like comment section like yeah. half the days and they'd be like we get it yeah I'd be like what yeah what's going yeah. on what's going on but That's... like that is the biggest thing that scares me is the like the divide, mm -hmm. I guess, if it ends. Exactly. Which, like, you never enter a relationship being like, this isn't going to work out. Yeah. You know, you're in love you with You never the know. You never know. And then I think, you know, witnessing so much, you know, about the, like, lesbian TikTok drama between yeah. Little you Miss really... Siwa and, like, <laughs> Little Miss Cyrus and, like, all that. It's so crazy. I never wanted to be a part of it, and I never was. Like I was in like one true, video, true. But they you did don't not talk get dragged in for some reason, and yeah. I'm so grateful for it yeah. because we were in that like little uh -huh. London, like Tipton video, <laughs> and then it was the comments were quite funny. They were like nightmare smoke circle, and I was like, I get it, <laughs> I'd be scared too. But like I never got fully dragged into it. Like that Kale's girl never talked about it. Like nobody ever said anything. It wasn't on. It, now I feel like looking back, there was a literal like newscast person that kale's girl that would like <laughs> talk about every single move that was happening and i'd be like those detectives i'm you telling you this? i'm telling you they know things before you know things yeah that that is i think the one of the biggest like holdbacks from like putting a, a relationship out there especially in the queer community because of people like that and and they will track everything and even like you said like what if it doesn't work out? Because you never know. Like people grow and change. And like you don't know what the future holds. But I, I try to never let that affect me. I just like live in the present. Yeah. Future, we'll deal with it when we get there. But they, that means if you're opening up your relationship to begin with, they will be there when it ends. If it ends, like they're just there through all of that. Yeah. So you just have to like accept that and acknowledge that. And I, like I said, I try to let it not hold me back because. You'll deal with it when you get there. Right, right, right. But yeah, good props to you. I'm so glad you you made it out alive. Yeah, I did. Yeah. I'm great much, job. Like, and I think that's the thing that like held me back. Like, I never want to be a part of that. Yeah. Where it's like, obviously, I'm looking at this girl. And I'm like, oh, like I'm in love with you. Like, Aww. I love her so much. But like, a part of that like wants to just have it just for me for you just like a little while longer. Plus, I think it's something that like people don't talk about very often. People get so invested. And not the married married couples. Yeah. Well, except for the Belairs. I love them. Oh my gosh. I love gosh. them so much. They're the um, best. They're the best. I love their videos. And yeah. you can tell they're so in love and they've been married for however long, yeah. right? That's like a very stable relationship that you can be like, oh my gosh. Absolutely. Marriage. Like, yeah. that's what I have to look up to. That's what I have to look up to mm. because how many, I mean, London and who just got married? London and Olivia yeah. just got married. That's a cool thing. Yeah. Like, you get to see all these like mm -hmm. queer people getting married. But I think the relationships that people get so invested in are the ones that have that soft launch, hard launch, that build up. Yeah. And then they get together. And you even saw it like on the earlier days of TikTok where there was that like really like solid lesbian community, the one that kind of like blew up for a bit yeah. and then went dormant for yeah. a bit and then blew up again once mm -hmm. everybody started breaking up for no reason, right? Yeah. Remember, well, what was it called? The lesbian curse. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think the interesting part about that is if you look at all these people that all these like younger people, I'd say four or five years younger than them are looking up to. Mm -hmm. These are 18, 19 to 22 year olds who are falling in love for the first time, experiencing yeah. that love on the Internet. And then logistically, 
how many relationships at like 18, 19 last? Exactly. Right. Yeah. So it's like, man, we're just like watching all these people live their very normal lives. Mm -hmm. And then it ends online because that's what happens in that age group. And then everybody starts to take sides. And it's like, you don't get to experience love normally. Exactly. Whoa. Whoa. That's true. Exactly. Like when, because when you put it out there, it's like all these people are along with you for literally all of it. And then like you said, with people taking sides and talking about it. And it's like, even the people talking about it don't know the full truth and they won't know the full truth because they they're not there these are just people like taking what they're seeing and being like so this must mean this and this must mean this so then it's just a whole bunch of scrambled eggs of like these people thinking that this person is wrong this people think like it just it gets messy quick but thank you to the people to those married couple the belairs the belairs who who just they're married and they give us hope right to look that's, up to, so that's literally i can't think of any other lesbian like married couple on yeah. tiktok that i look up to and i'm Same. like man like i want to be like them. i know because like you think i have that too where i look at them and i'm like man i want that i know like they're so happy they're so cute and they're so cute but like and I don't know. It's odd being like within that age group of the people who kind of the, the lesbian curse happened to mm -hmm. and then their lives kind of got blasted out on social media. Yeah. And I think that's why I didn't say anything because then it was just going to turn into like you did this, you did that, exactly. you did this, you did that. And that yeah. was going to be horrible. Mm -hmm. So I was like, mm. you definitely have to like have a for your feet planted mm -hmm. and a strong head on your shoulders to just know how to like navigate those mm -hmm. those tough waters because it can be so hard. Yeah hearing like what everyone's saying about it. But at the end of the day, like, you know, everything blows over, right? Yeah. Like they, they'll talk about it, they'll get excited about it and then it'll blow over and like, it is your life and you are the one who knows like truth and where your heart is at and, you know, yeah, find your loved one yeah. and you just- I think it's like adapting, I feel yeah. like. Cause I don't know, I didn't gr grow up on the internet. Like yeah, I started posting either. when I was like 19. Yeah. And so now like kind of going throughout my 20s and like hitting these like pivotal moments where I'm like, okay, that was growth. Yeah. And I kind of go back in my old videos and I see it and I'm like, man, uh -huh. like I'm growing here and people mm -hmm. are witnessing it. And mm -hmm. then some people like can kind of notice things that I don't even notice about myself. They're exactly. like, oh my gosh, you're getting your spark back. Or, like we could tell you were sad here. And it was like, man, they like freed you really, really, really yeah. well. That's another element of like, being on social media, not only with relationships, but like of people who are following you from like 19 to however long you're doing it, we grow, like 20s is your years to grow. And of course we experience it a little bit differently being in the public eye, but we are growing and changing without even realizing it. So like, as we hit all these bumps in the road and we learn and grow, we look back and we're like, whoa, but these people watching like are realizing it even quicker than we are. Cause they're the ones like watching it happen. Like we can't, we, we feel like we're the same yesterday as we are today, as we are tomorrow, right. you know, but like, couple months ago, I was, I'm like, wow, like I was even different than like you just, yeah. I don't know. I think it's beautiful. I think it's really beautiful to have the opportunity to watch creators grow and change yeah. throughout the years. So. And then I think I've experienced this. I think every creator has experienced this. Like, you know, you blow up for one thing. Mm -hmm. You blow up for the dad jokes. I blew up for like in like 2020 for like doing little boba times, like story times and yeah. stuff. And I still try to do story times mm -hmm. because that's like what people know me for. But I look back. And to kind of put it like blatantly, I used to be so happy. Like just every day I'd wake up like with full of glee and joy. And I used to be like, oh my God. No worries in the, the world. The birds are singing. And now I wake up every day and I'm like, okay, I can yeah. do this. Like yeah. you have to kind of go in it with a mm -hmm. different mindset. Cause yeah. like the world affects you between these ages. The world like kind of stomps on you a bit. Mm -hmm. Between 18 to 25, you're figuring out exactly. how to be an adult. Yeah. Like I'm literally about to go do my taxes and I do I know what that is? Like I have no idea what Why I'm doing. Why didn't they teach that in high school? That's a whole nother thing. But I think <laughs> growing like content wise too is yeah. very hard because people follow you for one thing and then when you stop doing that one thing, you and you have to diversify like, you yeah. fall off and then people, i haven't seen you in so long and it's because you're doing different stuff stuff that makes you happy exactly what's your experience been with like blowing up for that mm -hmm. and then the whole coming out thing and then kind of rediscovering what you want to do i love this question so much because as we grow and change like these platforms grow and change and what they want so yes blew up for the dad jokes it was great it was everyone's girlfriend but then all of a sudden like one that's not what like the tiktok algorithm wanted and to like I realized I don't want to just 
do that. I, I don't like to put myself in a box. There's so much more to do with acting and like different types of content and makeup and like girly things, you know? Um, but then of course, as I start post posting like makeup videos, boys are like, we don't care. We don't care. You know? So, so that's definitely tricky to navigate. And then like you get hard on yourself and compare yourself to these other people who blew up for doing stuff like that. And then they have the following and you don't because you, you're not doing what you were told to do in the beginning. So my experience with that is trusting that like so i first started posting on tiktok in like 2020 mm -hmm. pandemic wasn't good at it it took all the way until the end of 2021 so two years Me too. of just like posting consistently mm -hmm. to to blow up for something something yeah. so knowing that if i want to like change my niche a little bit i can still post some dad jokes but sprinkle in some makeup videos here and there like just trusting that it is going to take time yeah you know and also like i'm a big advocate for comparison as a thief of joy because yeah it is real hard to compare the numbers and see how other people are doing and get really hard on yourself but just trusting that like you're where you're supposed to be everyone brings something different to the table like and there's people that still like care about you and love you and watch mm -hmm. you no matter what type of content you're making mm -hmm. like you can't be scared to to change your niche to change your content to fulfill you so you don't get burnt out and be worried like oh but it's not going to do good so i'm not going to do it you know mm -hmm. like i'm i'm just such a big advocate to to go for it full send follow that dream don't look at the numbers mm -hmm. you can do anything you put your mind to right 100 write it in a journal like 100 And what's your dream? Like, what do you want to do? Uh, I want to be in a Netflix movie. You want to be in a Netflix so movie? So bad. You give, like, Netflix girly for sure. Please. Girl Next Door. Like, really? Victoria Justice. Like, Victoria, some Victoria. Yeah. You know what I mean? Love. Whatever. Like, Love. I, it, it'll happen. Just yeah. need to, like, cop in some better acting classes. and. Yeah. I'm, I've been auditioning. I did a Nissan commercial audition yesterday. Wow. <laughs> She's getting wow. there. She's getting there. <laughs> yeah. So that's the big dream. But, of course, you've got the other things. Like, mm -hmm. love to be on Dancing with the Stars. You'd. You know, so. you should like, just be the like dancer. I need to not be hard on myself. I'm gonna say because I wanted to say I'm not good enough for that yet. I need to see. I went to college for dance, right? But right. I left and our, haven't been dancing. Our that first much. like hangout was you like whipping out full on at playlist live on the dance like, floor, ballerina, fully shit. tap dancing, fully. Oh my gosh, you're right. I, we had I have so a video much fun. Of you, like holding up a calculator. Yes. For some reason. Yes. We were. <laughs> that was our first experience. That you're good. was so yeah. much fun. Yeah. Aww. You're really good. Oh my, thank you. Yeah, you're going to get it done. I also love that like mindset. It's something that I'm kind of trying to shift myself into as well. Like, yeah. this is going to happen for me. Absolutely. You're what do you so... want to happen? Man, I have no idea. That's, That's okay. Thing. I need to find it because Carter okay. is like, we wake up every day. We go, you know, <laughs> hang out on the balcony. He needs, every day he's like, I'm going to change the world. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm just Pardon. trying to figure out what I want to eat for lunch. Yeah, absolutely. Like, we have such different mindsets. Which is fine. Yeah, I absolutely. also just completely blew up on accident. Yeah. So I never had any sort of goal in mind. And I kind of love what I do. Like, absolutely. this is so exciting to me every day, making, like, waking up and making that. my silly little video. And then I have people kind of branching out and being like, okay, I started on TikTok, so I have to do music. I have to do acting. I have to do dancing. I have to do, like, TV. You don't have to do anything. Well... It's getting to the point where I'm like, man, I probably, I should, I probably should do that. Like, I probably should. Yeah, it couldn't hurt to try. Bit. And if you're yeah. like, I hate that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You, you realize. That. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, but I, I think that's totally fine. There, there are people who like know exactly what they want to do, how they're gonna do it, and there's some people who are just like, let's yeah. get dinner at this place tonight, you know, yeah. and then just, I just have, go like, with the flow. General goals. Absolutely. That's important. That's important to have just general goals and things to like get to for next week and then you can get to something else the next right. week you know so, but, so so social media for you is like the stepping stone into what yeah, you want to do i think so i'm a very goal oriented person so i i mean i i love social media and mm -hmm. it's something i want to do for a long time and i'm so grateful for the platforms that i have i know not everyone gets the opportunities mm -hmm. to have them so like i'm constantly trying to like use them for good and to make people happy right. like the world can be a really dark and scary place sometimes so like i'm grateful that i get to be a light for some people mm -hmm. But it's not what I want to do forever and ever and ever. I think right. it's something that will always be there. But then like having things to look forward to, like eventually moving into a house, having a family, yeah. you know, like stuff like that. Like, oh, obviously, house. I'm 23. I can't. I, I don't too. want to do. Oh, I didn't know that. What's your birthday? September 2nd. Wow. I was recent. Happy birthday. When's your birthday? June 12th. We have the okay. same birthday. 
Yeah. No way. Yeah. That I am two years crazy. older. I'm two okay. years older, but we do have the same birthday. Okay. Um, anyways, some people, I mean, like, I follow this girl. She's, like, 19 on TikTok, lives in her own house, just bought a car, like, me sitting here, like, comparing myself. But Is it Lil Tay? No, her name's, like, Haley. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? What? Wait, who? You don't know who Lil Tay is? Okay, I don't know. I, I love live her under like, a no rock. Way. I really don't know anyone. Yeah, I could tell. You started laughing. <laughs> She was just this like eight year old who blew up being like, I'm better than you. I'm richer than you. <laughs> it was like a scandal. Like, this is how I found out who she was. There was like a couple, it was a couple months ago. It was like she died and she blew up when she was really young and then she like died. And then a, a few days later, there was like a statement that got released where it was like, no, nah, nah, she's not dead. <laughs> and everyone was like, oh, word. And then she just came out with like a music video. Yeah. Do you think it was like on purpose to see that's what i don't know because i don't, don't want to be like i, I, I don't want to be like that but yeah i don't know i mean people are crazy these days with yeah. like how they how they like for publicity and stuff but yeah. i don't know i don't even know who that is so uh yeah who? it's just this well my girlfriend knew who she was and i i didn't yeah. so i was like what? oh no and she was like Lil Tay's dead and i was like oh, ah. no <laughs> okay Oh my gosh, I'm gonna look to see if people asked us gay things. I guess this is a question. Can I be an audience question because I forgot this is related to football. Yeah. Who got who into football? Easy. My girlfriend really got me into football. You like into it now? I'm like into it. I remember in the beginning, I was like, oh, like this is something she really cares about, so let me care about it too. Before she even came to town, I was like on my TV looking at YouTube, like, Football for beginners, like just trying to understand <laughs> the very most basic and like some little terms that I could say when we're watching it together mm -hmm. just to like sound like I know what I'm doing. But but no, like this girl like knows what she's talking about. She knows all the players. She knows what everything means. Like she's so into it. And I genuinely like fell in love with it. Like I, I genuinely enjoy it. It's not just because she likes it. Like I really am invested in it. I love the Philadelphia Eagles. That is my team. And now we're here. The rest of the street, we're going to okay. the game on Sunday. Okay. That's me and my girlfriend, except for Harry. It's just with Harry Styles. She, like, <laughs> loves Harry Styles. I want to see beginning, Harry I was like, concert. She's seen him, like, five times. That's yeah. crazy. She just, like, loves him so much. Aww. And at first, I started listening to all her favorite songs because I would, like, Aww. clock what she listened to in yeah. the car. So then I put them in a playlist, and I was like, I'm going to know these words because she knows the words, and I want to be able to, like, sing in the car with her. <laughs> and now I get Harry edits on my For You page, so... <laughs> Yeah. I get Taylor Swift at it's on mine. So Are you a Swifty? Yeah. Okay. She's a big Swifty girl. You have such like a very like expressive face. Like I know. <laughs> see? Like there's like something about it. It makes like, me simp. Because she <laughs> lo like she looks like just like a little kid. She's got that and no I'm poker like, face. I want to squeeze you. Okay. I love that no poker face look. Um, <laughs> somebody said, what was the biggest thing holding you back from coming out? And like how did you get past that initial fear? I, I think that it was really knowing that most of my followers were men. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I even like have people saying like, don't like you lose your followers, like blah, blah, blah. And I, I mean, I, I let that circle around in my head for a bit. And I, I, I did keep it in for a bit. And then eventually I got to a point where I was just like, you know, what? I don't care. Like, like we had talked about, like if they don't, want to support me mm -hmm. anymore i don't want them there if they if they're not going to love and accept me for who i am then i don't want them there right and that that is genuinely like the biggest thing that held me back um which is crazy like yeah but but like i said now like it it really just opened the gates to like a whole new like, yeah. queer community that is so loving and supporting that i yeah. just love and i'm so grateful for i think it's also crazy like being like needing to look at your own personal life in a logistical way because yeah. of the internet. Like having to yeah. even take that into account I know. would be mind boggling for like a lot of people. But you have exactly. to think about it. Like You have to. I mean, because like it, it also is my job and my work. And, you know, I, it's hard. It's like, oh, is this a, the right decision to make? Mm -hmm. But some things just end up outweighing others. And then next thing you know it, everyone yeah. knows you have a girlfriend. Girlfriend. <laughs> Girlfriends are the best. And then this one says, I think this is an interesting question to ask you because I'm sure as like a femme, you get all those like gross guys that are being like, that's not true. Do you yeah. agree with the lesbian stereotypes? Like the mask, the femme, the like being able to categorize somebody just based off their looks? No, I think you can be <laughs> whoever you want to be. I mean, as we were talking about earlier, like when people ask, like the guys will say like, who's the dude? It's like the whole point is like, there isn't one. Right. You know what I mean? And it's like, 
she wants to put on a little bit of makeup some days to feel better about herself like let her it doesn't mean that she can't because she's like the mask one you know what right. i mean i mean i think it should just be whatever makes them happy i right. i i'm not a big labels person yeah but i mean i i i'm happy to say that like i'm just the feminine like i yeah. am just the femme here but <laughs> yeah does that make sense does that <laughs> no i get it because like i think also like just kind of being a mask person i'm sure your girlfriend can kind of relate to this you're kind of known for being toxic you're kind of like people look at you and they're <laughs> like, like hey mamas yeah like hey mamas like all like, these labels like all these labels like people think like i i'm half the time i'm more feminine than my girlfriend yeah like i'm like skipping that. through the store i'm ordering my pink <laughs> drink and i'm like exactly. la -di -da. also like sometimes sometimes i want to like wear a backwards hat and like baggy jeans and mm -hmm. like a big t-shirt but like i can't because i'm Fat? you know right. like it just doesn't like the it ebb and flows every day yeah how you want to like exactly yourself. so so that's why it's just it's hard to put you can totally label if you want to yeah and just be like i'm femme today i'm masked tomorrow like right yeah that's that's just how i feel about all that and then uh, it, was, it was especially hard for my mom to understand like mm -hmm. sometimes she'll see relationships she, but she's like they're both femme and i'm like yeah yeah like, it's fine yeah. <laughs> you know what i mean yeah my mom so. did that too when she met my girlfriend she was like <laughs> So you like Maddie? And I was like, Mom, this is my girlfriend. Like, I think she likes me a little bit. And my mom was like, but um, who, have you ever had a boyfriend? And she was like, yeah. And she goes, but I don't get it. Like, are you gay? And I was like, Mom, there are bi people. Like, <laughs> I had to, like, explain yes. yeah. that little, like, roadblock to her. But I think it's so interesting. Is your girlfriend, like, directionally challenged like me? Like, everywhere I go, it's so nice. I have, like, this little girlfriend along. Like, I'll be wandering. I take her. I'll be wandering, and she'll just, like, pull me in the right uh -huh. direction yes. and just kind of toss me I where get I the need maps. to go. Isn't it nice? It's so nice. Yeah. I mean, it depends. If we're at a football game, I'm letting her lead the way. Right. But if we're literally anywhere else, like, I just like to take the wheel. Right. It depends. I mean, of course, like, there's balance, but I think that's so cute that yes. you're, like, you're like, take me and yeah. put me where no, I'm supposed it's to so stand nice. in the pit. I just, like wander and yes. she's just kind of like this way and i'm like no <laughs> this way oh uh, i love girlfriends i love girlfriends it's also weird because i think <laughs> you know there's always a stigma like you walk in the room i don't know people are like a gay, gay person <laughs> like they're always like oh you're a small man or you're like a like mask lesbian it's just like i don't know i get i feel like people like peg me right away uh -huh. and they're like you're this way and i'm like if you get to know me I like to read and spend time alone. Like I'm not over here like, yeah. I don't know, crazy. Yeah. I don't do anything wild. Well, thank you for being here. Thanks so much for having me. This was so fun. <laughs> really? Yes. I, I'm really passionate about talking about like- This stuff? Is it cool to be able to like talk about it? Like so yeah. openly? Yeah, it it scares me a little bit sometimes because mm. I just know that the power that like social media has and like the way people take things and like I just my heart is so big and I just want everything to like come across good and like make people feel good. Yeah. So it, it does terrify me sometimes, though, because really? like, you know, but I, I do enjoy it and I'm passionate about it. So yeah. you speak really like really well about really? it. Really? Yeah, you do. Thank you. Because I think Thank we have you. like a lot of the same mindset. I mean, I yeah. do what I do. Because I just want to make people happy. And if yeah. I can be that like distraction or that break for like 30, 45 seconds. For sure. It's what, it's what I'm going to do every day, you know. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, Aww, I'm so you. glad you found your little girlfriend in queer community. Because it's so Thank important you. and it's so uplifting. Yeah. And I feel like generally, overall speaking, like the second somebody comes out, you have that automatic family. Yeah. That's just going to kind of be Which there for nice. you. And it's I'm so really glad nice. you like found that after you came out and lost yeah. all the bad ones. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I appreciate it. Yeah. It's great. I can breathe again. Yeah. Yeah. It's def definitely like oh. a breath of fresh air. Cute. Well, thank you so much for being here. Thank Tell you. everyone where they can find you. What do you have coming up that's exciting? Yeah, yeah for sure. Um, all the socials are at Savannah Ray Demers. TikTok, Insta, YouTube, Snapchat is Savannah R. Demers. That's where you can see me make my bed every day. Um, anything exciting? I'm kind of chilling. This summer was really crazy for me. Did a lot of travel, so I'm like chilling right now. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of like lifestyle content. Yeah, I'll, I'll be traveling a bit again soon. So yeah, holidays are always big travel months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So good times. But yeah, thank you so much. Yes, of course. And this is Closet Talk, where a new episode gets released every single Friday on my YouTube channel, Maddie Westbrook, and you can find me absolutely anywhere. And when I say anywhere, I mean anywhere. You can find me on LinkedIn. No, wait, actually, I have to set that up. 
Um, and you can listen to this podcast on YouTube or anywhere you listen to your podcasts. And I'll see you next time for a very special guest.